out. Within the discussions with the main voting bureau, um, currently there is a there is signage that is put up in the polling station that no phones are allowed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those are rules or regulations that we have established um, that remains there. Understanding that it is not doesn't have the underlying legislation, so we're looking at how and if that can be further enforced. Um, now that, let's say, hopefully the El Beham will be um, enacted in time to be used this uh, election with the visibility that is then there that people would, let's say, um, refrain from doing those things, seeing that this was one of the ways in which the quote-unquote uh, vote buying has taken place or uh, the suspicion of vote buying has taken place. Um, there was a discussion as to people saying, but I am proud to vote, and people in the Netherlands were kept gestemmed, you know, taking a selfie with, with um, their voted ballot. But I think you can do it with the closed ballot. You can, I think it is specific, no, to avoid the whole um, proof of I have voted for you to receive some sort of payment. Um, I think you may want a memory of your first vote, if it is that, or maybe your vote period for you, and that's not a problem. But I think more than one person who may have relied on this method realized that they definitely paid for more than they got. So I don't know if it's considered a thing anymore. But definitely to avoid the situation, uh, we'll have further discussions um, with the main voting bureau once we've received their advice on the dates. No, I did not get back the feedback as yet, and I do see that there are, are statements being made in the public. The reason I have not divulged the dates that have been devised as the feasible dates thus far is due to the fact that I do not want to make a statement and then get feedback afterwards that, um, unfortunately, no, not this. We have had times in the past where dates have been announced and changed and changed especially when a snap election situation. We do have time, and therefore I'm asking for the time. The main voting bureau chair was off island and they are busy deliberating on this as we speak to ensure that that is done. Um, as you mentioned with the signing of the ballot, that's the coding that we currently use. We will see what else is possible in the short term, but indeed more vigilance on that will be done. The info sessions, um, the date for that sec for how to vote, etc. those dates have not yet been set. So once we have finalized the actual postulation and all the other dates, then we will um, make those uh, announcements. Especially after the discussion today, and the, the most interesting one I had with the organization, um, in, and in planning for the consultations with the public, we'll be able to determine um, prior areas in terms of short and long term, um, especially to see what is still possible for this election um, and ensure that in the info sessions that people know, hey, we are discussing these things, but they are more for the long term. Certain things are constitution-based uh, changes that will take a longer time and will definitely legislative changes that are based on the ordinances will take a longer time. So anything we can do with ministerial regulations or national decrees and or uh, national decrees with special measures, those things can be done in a shorter period of time with the cooperation of our concerned. So we will let you know as soon as we've been able to determine what else can be done based on the concerns. But for me, as um, Minister of General Affairs, Anything that we can do to minimize the opportunity for um, corrupt practices to continue is what is a priority for me, whether it's in the long or the short or the medium term, and that we bring more awareness to the people in terms of your responsibility for proper governance and that when you do those things, you give up your right to have complaints after because you are then part of the problem. Um, we had a discussion with corporate governance just recently, and it remains a people problem. So we have to develop the strength of character, the morals and values to 
reap what we sow. If we, we're going to plant something, that is what will grow. So let us plant correct, do what is right, and model the correct behavior for those coming up because we cannot speak one way and act another and don't think that the young people aren't watching. I'm quite happy that COM took a decision to remove the curtains from the polling stations. And I know there's some work still to be done. It's part of the electoral reform, but I want to slam in and kick in the door one time. So you move the curtains. You have taken away the privacy of the people and they go, oh, that's not true. Nobody can see where you're voting. Yes, they can. Because the paper, the ballot, is a big ballot. It's not a small little ballot. It's a big ballot. So if you're voting on the right side, those people sitting there, those observers, know which side you were, which parties you were. If you're in the middle or if you're on the left, they know they can see it. So if they really wanted to make projections, who voted right, who voted left, who voted center, you can give an indication on where the party votes was. Now, this isn't right. So it's either you move the curtains, but the people vote that you can't see them vote because they can come in with their cameras. They can come in with their phones. Nobody said they can't. And for you to deny them that, you have to have a very good reason. I cannot recall one court case where there was vote buying by taking pictures. There was vote buying in a case because people received money in the police station. The another one, the other vote buying case had to do with the prison, where people got lists and all those type of things. But there was never a case where there were pictures taken and the pictures were part of the vote buying. So the evidence that we want to talk about to justify or motivate doesn't exist. Even though we are good at creating evidence, it's going to be difficult to justify why you're doing it. Rutter, for God's sakes, as Prime Minister of the Netherlands, took a picture of his vote and put it on Facebook a few years ago. So if the law is different in Holland than it is here, then we should understand and be explained why it is. I am not supporting people going in with cameras or curtains being put back up. I am saying if you're going to apply the law, apply it correct. Don't apply it funny because you feel you're going to win the next election because they might buy you out. Or now the media have to start charging less because you ain't got money as a political party. That should not be the reason for electoral reform, Madam Prime Minister. You see, other people are afraid to call you all out on your nonsense, but election season has started. November 24th is postulation. January 18, 2024 is the projected election date, unless we have a snap election again because somebody goes here wire. And the writing is on the wall already. Time rules. Don't serve yourself first. Do not eat with your mouth open. Don't rest your elbows on the table. Don't make noise when eating. Does not apply when enjoying KFC buckets. When we bucket together, we are as we really are. Are you SHV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? 
Asset V is cardless. Request your My Asset V account today and enter the virtual office of Asset V. Go to assetv.sx and sign up now. Asset V, yeah, yeah. your social health insurance. During the hurricane season, a potential tropical cyclone can produce rainfall that can cause flash flooding and rock falls. Stay away from flood-prone areas during heavy rainfall, such as Jump Up Casino on Emma Plain Road in Phillipsburg, A.T. Illich Road Roundabout, L.B. Scott Road from Emilio Wilson Park until Cake House Supermarket, Zaker's Gut from Petro Plus Gas Station until the Seventh Day Adventist Church, Welkalakin Road K Hill from Welkalakin Road Roundabout until the One Tete Loke Roundabout, Beacon Hill Road from Sunset Bar and Grill until the beginning of White Sands Road and Rhine Road, also known as Mullet Bay Road, after Sonesto Maho Beach Hotel to the entrance of Cooper Coy from the intersection of the University Drive until the intersection of Rio Grande. For more information on how you can keep yourself and your family safe this hurricane season, visit stmartingov.org forward slash hurricane. This public service announcement is brought to you by the government of St. Martin. to the question of MP Sarah Westcott. What is the intention for implementation date of this ordinance? As stated in the presentation, we expected October, November. However, we do realize that MP Bryson has also pointed out the issue of Article 6, effective date by Lance Vassalite, and we do agree that the change in which he is proposing will be more effective MP Sarah Westcott, with respect to the NCD planning, what exactly are the plans for population screening? What are we going to be screening for? We are currently in the questionnaire process, and then we will move to the screening, and then screening data will be collected. As minister, I would also like to see screening be done every five years. However, this time frame will lengthen once the health information system, the HIS, is completely in, instituted, and this would help us to be able to accumulate accurate, correct data directly from the general practitioners. What will we be screening for? We are currently screening for hypertension, cholesterol, and blood sugar levels. MP Panaflet, what can be done to make the requirement more simpler? At the moment, the ministry is looking into how we can accommodate persons, how we can facilitate in more easy manner. One of the suggestions you brought about was online, because currently you cannot do it online, so that can be a manner which we facilitate, and we are looking into the questionnaire to see if we can alleviate some of these questions. So we will take your consideration of online processing um, with us once we continue to move forward with the policy or the legislation. Was the criteria taken from the Netherlands? No, it was not taken from the Netherlands. MP through you, Mr. Chair. No, it was not taken from the Netherlands. We now go over to the voting. According to Article 57 of the Rules of Order, we now go over to the voting on the draft national ordinance amending the national ordinance on general old age insurance, the national ordinance on general widow and orphans insurance, the national ordinance on minimum wages, the national ordinance on health insurance, and the national ordinance on accident insurance to adjust the reference period for the price index of household consumption. This is um, national ordinance number 168 of the 2022-23 parliamentary year. We will vote on Articles 1 through 6, the title, the considerations, and the draft in its entirety, as amended by the amendment that was just accepted. Does any member request voting by Hove de Lucas Stemming? We have Hove de Lucas Stemming, and I will first turn to members of parliament if they would like to motivate their vote. No need to motivate. Thank you. We go over to the voting, and I will select a number to indicate where the voting will begin. We will begin at number six. 
Fear will call out the names and you will state for or against. MP Melissa Gums. Four. Four. MP Grisha Heliger Martin. Four. MP George Pantaflet. Four. MP Rayon Peterson. Four. MP Ison Richardson. Four. MP Angelique Ramu. MP Ludmila De Weaver. Four. MP Sarah Westcott Williams. Four. MP William Marlin. MP Akeem Arundel. Four. MP Solange Duncan. Four. MP Christophe Emmanuel. MP Rolando Bryson. Four. This draft national ordinance has the support of 10 members of parliament, zero votes against. Therefore, it has been accepted by the parliament of St. Martin, no ties in this case. According to Article 88, subsection 1 of the Constitution of St. Martin, parliament shall notify the government that parliament has approved this law in its public meeting of today, Wednesday, August 16th, 2023. SHV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SHV is cardless. Request your My SHV account today and enter the virtual office of SHV. Go to SHV.SX and sign up now. SHV, yeah. your social health insurance With you, the new Kentucky. A combination that will surprise the most curious palates. Combining the deliciousness of KFC chicken and the practicality of a taco with a doubly delicious ergonomic shape. Wow! Compatible with all types of bites. New Kin Taco. Enjoy a double breaded chicken breast with our secret recipe cheese, lettuce, and tomato. New Kin Taco, the innovation that's in everyone's mouth. It's hurricane season. Are you prepared? Here are a few tips to keep in mind to help keep you and your family safe. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th, with the peak occurring between mid-August and late October. This hurricane season, be sure to put together a go bag. A disaster supply kit including a flashlight, batteries, cash, first aid and supplies, medications and copies of your critical information if you need to evacuate. This public service announcement was brought to you by the government of St. Martin. The first one at part three sets out a number of issues and requirements which must be satisfied in order for a person's name to be entered or to remain in the register of electors. And I suggest that those can be um, encapsulated on the, on the five heads. One, residency. Two, registration. Three, identification cards. Four, investigation. And five, confirmation. 
I also suggest that those five heads together um, effectively um, result in a verification process. Residency, the first of those verification requirements, can be said to be comprised of two distinct components. You have residency, which, is, which relates to the registration of a person. So that's, I would suggest, the first component. The second is residency as it relates to the circumstance in which a person can be deprived of his or her entitlement to remain registered and to vote. The first component is addressed at Clause 71C of the new Registration of Electors Act and requires that a person applying for registration must have been resident in the polling district for a period of at least three months of continuous residence immediately preceding the application for registration. And if any provision of the Constitution has been violated, they can apply to the High Court for a declaration. That is actually a very interesting provision because that provision is only found in 14 constitutions around the world. Only 14 countries. Mm -hmm. All of them are members of the Commonwealth. And the four of them are in the Caribbean. And all of them are from the OECS. It's not in Jamaica or Trinidad or Barbados or Guyana. It's only in Antigua, Dominica, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, St. Vincent. I refer to page 11 to 12 of, of the final report of the elector, Electoral Reform Group. And it says, moreover, having regard to the nature of the debate currently taking place respecting electoral reform, the group is of the opinion that there is an issue of public confidence in the genuine interest and industry towards the current electoral reform effort. And that was in August 2019, um, my friends. Um, we are almost four years down the line, and we are still playing that game. No one has made representation objecting to persons on the voters list. Mr. Astafan was either uninformed or mischievous in his statement. I say this because, as President of the United Workers Party, we, on numerous occasions, wrote to the Electoral Commission making and requesting and pointing out to names on the electoral list that should not be there. When I contested in 2014, over 400 names were submitted to the Electoral Commission. None was attended to. 2019 general elections, we submitted names to the point where I, as a president of the party, wrote to the Elect to chief elections officer, pointing to him the fact that we need these names, these um, complaints attended to, these objections. Mr. Staff did not know the law, or he is malicious, because the law states if someone has to be objecting, the person of doing the objection must be in the same voting polling station, the same constituency as the person, the form must be filled, a witness must be obtained voting in the same polling station. So Mr. Baptist himself cannot send 400 persons and expect the electoral commission to remove those names from the list. He did not follow the procedure. And the court cases dealing with that have always said the procedures must be followed. Um, senior citizens and so on, but the Constitution also allows for Commonwealth citizens. Uh, who many residency requirement to vote in Dominic? Um, Rwanda is in the Commonwealth. What if 50,000 Rwandans were to relocate to Dominic? They're resident. Right, so, so the, the point I'm making is that <laughs> if we end up making a strong case against Dominicans who are born in Dominic, and who were registered in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution and the electoral, electoral laws. Why, we, why do we need to make a sort of vehement op 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 opposition towards the 
going through the process if we do pass the law on confirmation to get confirmed. And, and when they do, the question is, do we put any limitations on, on them? Example. Can I respond? Oh, one second. The, one of the recommendations of today is Byron is for 90 or 50 day residency in Dominic for 45 years. Um, this is about 10, 12 days every year. To me, this isn't this 90, 50 day scenario more of a tourism promotion? <laughs> uh, come to Dominica rather than a requirement of voting, uh, which is such an important uh, first constitutional um, right? right? <laughs>